Kia ora, Year 12 and 13. This is the first video for our new topic, which is integration. Um, so I'm going to start this topic um, in a different place from lots of teachers. We're going to start by talking about how to find the area under a curve. And today we're going to learn about one way to approximate this, which is by using what we know from Year 9 about trapeziums. Okay, so the basic area problem in integration is to say, how can I figure out exactly what's the area under a curve between two points? And we'll call them x0 and x1. Now in a couple of days we're going to learn um, a really amazing part of maths called the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra um, Calculus, which tells us that if we reverse, if we anti-differentiate, we get to the answer to that problem. But to build up some intuition for that, we're going to start by looking at trapezia. So this is um, the curve of y equals x squared. Now let's suppose that we want to figure out what's the area under that curve between the x values of 1 and 3. Well we could get pretty close to an answer by saying if I just join up those two points there. Oh that's a beautiful straight line. There we are. Lovely straight line, but you're all used to that by now. Um, I can figure out that area. Right? And we know from year 9 that the area of a trapezium is T is equal to the height times the average of the two parallel sides. So it might not look like a trapezium to you just yet, but just let's step back a minute. This is my A, this is my B. And this is my height. So on our picture here, here's my height, h, and the y value there of 1 is going to tell me the length of that side. And this side must have length of 9. So that would tell me that if I just do one big trapezium, the height is three is two, right? And the average of the sides is ten over two, which is five, so it's fifteen. But it's pretty obvious that that's a pretty bad approximation. Now, an easy way to make it better would be to divide that area up into two trapezia. So we're going to do that on the next slide. Okay, look, I've done it in GeoGebra for us. So now we've got the area under the curve y equals x squared between 1 and 3, and I've got two trapezia to work with. So the first one has got an area of 1 for the height times the average of the two sides. So it's going to be 1 plus 4 over 2. I'm going to leave it like that. And the area of the second one has also got a width of 1 times this side averaged with this side. So another way that I can write that is like this. I've got, I can take out the factor of, of 2. I've got 1 half. Now let's see what we've got. Well we've got the 1 and then I've got a plus 4, oh, plus another 4, plus 9. Now I'm, I'm going to show you in class how we can extend this to quite a few rectangles. But this gives us a really nice way to approximate the area under a curve. And what we can do is make smaller and smaller width rectangles. So it's time for a bit of notation. I'm going to call the width of each re rectangle, I'm going to call H. And these values here, I'm going to label as y0, y1, and y2. So we'll just do one more go of this, and now we're going to divide our um, area under y equals x squared into four trapezia. Oh, here we are on this slide. So we've got four now, and so we're getting quite narrow trapezia. So the area we've got here is equal to 0.5 times 
the average of this value and this value. Now we actually need to get our calculator out at this point. So 1.5 squared will be 2.25. So it's going to be 1 plus 2.25 over 2. So that's my first rectangle, I mean my first trapezium. The second one has a width again of 0.5 times 2.25, that value, plus the 4. All right, my next trapezium is this one in here. So it's 0.5 times the average of the lengths, which will be 4, plus now 2.25 squared here is giving me a value of 6.25. And lastly, we get 0.5 for the width. And the average is of 6.25 plus 9 squared. So just going over that again, for that last rectangle, the short side here has a length of 6.25. So 6.25, in case you missed it, our function is y equals x squared. Right? So 2.25 squared gives us 6.25. Similarly here, when I take 3 and I square it, I get my y value of 9. Okay, so I want you to start seeing the pattern that's coming. So we get t is equal to the width. I'll take out my 2. And then I have this pattern where the end points don't turn up twice. But all of the other ones do turn up in there twice. And that's because they are, one the first time, they're the long side of the trapezium in this example, and the second time they're the short side. So, this gives us our trapezium rule. If we have got n rectangles, we can figure out the area by breaking it down, by, by adding up the area of all of those separate trapezia. Okay, and you'll find this in um, Delta in Chapter 22, Point two. So we can now use this to figure out what the area is. Right, so we're going to do a simple example before you start doing some work in delta on these. Um, and I'm going to pick delta 22.2 and I will do um, something similar to one of the questions there where we've got y equals 1 over x. Okay, so we know that the positive part of that function looks something like this. Let's figure out an approximation to the area under the curve between x equals 1 and x equals 3. Well, I'm going to do that by breaking it into two pretty clunky trapezia, here and here. So the width h is equal to 1. So my trapezium rule says take that width, halve it, and then do this pattern where I do the end points once and all the other points twice. So in this case, my approximate area from the trapezium rule is going to be 1 half times, right, well here we've got the first y value, so that's 1 over 1, 1 plus 2 times 1 over 2, plus 1 lot of 1 third. Right, and that gives me 1 half times 1 and another 1 and 1 third, so 7 thirds. So that gives me an approximate answer of 7 six. Now we're going to come back to this in a, in a few days when we've learnt how to do real integration instead of rubbish trapezium approximations. And we're going to compare that answer to what we get when we integrate the function exactly, but not quite yet. All right, um, hope that made sense. Go and do a whole bunch of examples for some practice, um, and uh, I'll go over some other um, details about the trapezium rule in class. Thanks for watching.